Hello, my name is Staff Aureus. My friends call me Staff Aureus because I always walk around with this staff of Oreos. Did I mention friends? All my friends really like me. Oh my gosh, run! Staff Aureus is here! Ah, oh, he's so creepy, you gotta get away! It feels so good to be so popular. It's probably because I always walk around also holding this cluster of grapes. Or maybe it has to do with the fact that I'm a tall man who is yellow. I'm not quite sure. But I'm so popular and it feels great. Me, Staff Aureus. Hey, welcome to our scene on Staph aureus. This is going to be our first scene, I guess, on Microbiology Bacteria series. So Staph aureus, as you can see over here, represented by this guy, it ferments mannitol, and that's why he's a tall man for mannitol, and he's yellow because when it ferments mannitol, it turns the agar yellow. Staph aureus grows in cluster of grapes. And that's what Staph aureus means. It means golden cluster of grapes. And that's why he's holding this cluster of grapes. It helps remember that it grows in those clusters of grapes. And it's purple because in gram staining, it stains purple due to its thick peptidoglycan wall. And just a hint, we know this A over here binding to the grapes, the G on the grapes, to help us remember that the protein A binds to IgG at the FC region, and that prevents phagocytosis. Okay, let's talk about some other features of Staph aureus, and then we'll talk about the diseases it's associated with. Alright, so here are these guys running away from the Staph aureus guy, because they're kind of creeped out by him, and it's hard to blame them. Here's this guy over here. Let's take a look at him. So we see that he's got these purple in his ear, and his nose, and his armpit, and by his groin. That's to help us remember that Staph aureus is part of the normal flora of the ears, the nasal passageway, the axilla, and the groin. His skin is on fire to help us remember that Staph aureus is associated with a scolded skin syndrome. We note that even the cat was running away. Even the cat was creeped out by the tall man over here. The cat is to help us remember that Staph aureus is catalase positive, which means that it produces catalase, which converts hydrogen peroxide to oxygen and water. And we also note that this cat has a, it's got some jello stuck to its tail. The jello on its tail to help us remember that Staph aureus is also a coagulase positive. The cat was in such a rush to get away from this uh, creepy guy that he even stopped eating his betta fish on the floor. The betta fish. This betta fish was actually eating a red blood cell. The beta fish feeding the red blood cell showed us up, shows up in the, in the videos of the bacteria which are beta hemolytic, which means they completely take apart hemoglobin molecules. Before we get to this friend jumping out of the window, we know this friend. This friend actually has a hamburger as a head. A hamburger as a head. And we know it also has mayo on it. Mayo. That's because Staph aureus food poisoning is so associated with meats and mayo. The meat and the mayo. And, and he's running into a wall. In fact, he gets bumped r rapidly. That's to help us remember the rapid onset food poisoning that's associated with the enterotoxin produced by Staph aureus. Now let's come to this guy jumping out of the window. He's holding this container of soap. The company is EO Soap. Maybe it stands for Everyone Soap? I'm not sure. But it's supposed to help us remember the six inflammatory diseases associated with Staph aureus. And you know what? This soap is on fire just to help us remember that these are the inflammatory diseases. What are these six? EO Soap, E for endocarditis, which can ensue even in previously normal heart valves. And it most commonly affects the tricuspid valve. E for endocarditis. O is going to be for a very, very severe osteomyelitis. In fact, it's the most common cause of osteomyelitis. S is going to be for skin infections. Can cause a variety of skin infections. O is going to be for going to be for organ abscesses. A is going to be for arthritis, specifically septic arthritis, which is presents with warm, swollen, tender joints. And P is going to be for pneumonia. Staph aureus can produce a bacterial pneumonia, which on X-ray appears as patchy infiltrates. Now you finally come to this guy running away. This guy is actually a bottle. He's actually a toxin. He's a toxin. And he's going to remind us of TSST1. You see, some strains of Staph aureus produce the exotoxin TSST1, which causes toxic shock syndrome. And that's why we have this toxin over here getting shocked. To help us remember, toxic shock syndrome. This toxin acts as a super antigen which simultaneously binds MHC2 and T cell receptors causing T cell activation. Now toxic shock syndrome, just a word about it, it's associated with fever, and that's why he has this thermometer in his mouth, vomiting, and we see it vomiting on the shirt over there, rash, his face is a little bit rashed, 
shock, and organ failure. It results in increased levels of AST, ALT, and bilirubin. And it's associated with pre prolonged use of vaginal tampons, and that's why he's holding a tampon over here. You might have noticed that the cat was actually looking at something when it was jumping over the wall. What was the cat looking at it? He was looking at the Mars. For some reason, Mars was out at that night, and a van was going into it. Mars is going to help us remember MRSA. At Mars for MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. Methicillin-resistant Staph aureus is a strain that has become resistant to most antibiotics due to the presence of PPBs, altered penicillin binding proteins, so the beta-lactams can't adhere to the cell wall. But vancomycin is still effective against the base. All right, that's our scene on Staph aureus. I know it was quite weird, but that's how we remember things. I hope you enjoy. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel, leave comments, let us know how we can make this better. All righty, take care.